it's finally time. Over the last couple of weeks, I took my first steps on a new journey that is astrophotography. And today I'm very happy to share my first attempt at capturing Saturn with you guys. So sit down, relax and enjoy the story. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to the Observatory. Saturn is my favorite planet and I always thought that if I would someday start with astrophotography, I would choose it as my first target. As luck would have it, Saturn is currently visible in the early evening hours where I live, which makes it very accessible. So without thinking too much about it, I picked it as the target for my first project. My goal is to capture the beautiful ringed planet in as much detail as I can. And for this, I am going to use my new refractor telescope, the SV543 from Sviboni, as the centerpiece for my astrophotography setup, which by the way, I'm going to keep as simple as possible to see what a basic setup can yield in terms of capturing. The telescope has an aperture of 102 mm or 4 inches, and a focal length of 714 mm, making it an F7 achromatic refractor, which I will be using in combination with my trusty AZ Pronto mount from Skywatcher. Since for this project I'll be employing the lucky imaging technique, where I simply record the planet moving across the field of view of the camera, I won't be needing any automatic tracking capabilities, so the lightweight AZ Pronto should do just fine. Speaking of capturing, this part of the job will be done by the SV705C color camera from Sviboni, which I will be using in combination with the SV216 4 element 2x bellow also from Sviboni for an increase in magnification. The SV705C features the well-regarded and very capable IMX585 optical sensor from Sony, which is paired with a fast 128MB DDR3 buffer and a USB3 connectivity. In the spirit of transparency, I want to mention that both the camera and the bellow lens were sent to me by Sviboni, and while I really appreciate this, it won't color my professional opinion about these products. On the software side, capturing will be done using Fire Capture version 2.7 running on my laptop, which I just upgraded with more RAM and a fast NVMe module to better cope with high data transfer speeds. Because I'm new to astrophotography and because I didn't want to leave anything to chance, I also wanted to test the equipment before the big night. And it's a good thing that I did, because during my early tests, I learned some very crucial things about my setup and capturing the planets in general. Let me elaborate. During my first test, I noticed that I had major problems finding the target. This was simply enough to troubleshoot. It was because my red dot finder wasn't perfectly aligned with the telescope. While fine for visual observations, where you get to look through both the finder scope and the eyepiece and then scan for the target with your own eyes, it wasn't nearly accurate enough for astrophotography applications where you are left stuck with only the finder scope for, well, finding the target. You see, the thing that people usually don't mention when talking about astro gear in general is that the camera, in combination with the telescope alone, so no bellows or other lenses added to the setup, provides a pretty significant magnification increase. Shout out to Jason from the channel Small Optics, who mentioned this in one of his videos. I will leave a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out later. But yeah, this is totally the case. By my estimates, the SV705C acts like a 3 or 4 mm eyepiece in this uh, 4 inch f7 refractor of mine. This means that the object I'm aiming the telescope at appears in the image captured by the camera to be roughly as big as it would appear if I would look at it with my own eye using a 3 or 4 mm eyepiece. 
This also means that the patch of sky captured by the camera is very small and finding the planet proved to be much more difficult than I thought it would be. Contributing to this was also the fact that the red dot finder doesn't offer any magnification at all and the area covered by the small red laser dot appears to cover roughly the same area of the night sky as the whole field of view of the camera, which didn't do me any favors when trying to find Saturn in the live feed provided by the camera. So after trying to find a planet in the night sky for like 20 minutes or so without any real success, I set out to find a different solution to the finder scope problem. This is why I went ahead and switched out the red dot finder and replaced it with the SV165 mini finder scope from Siboni. Thanks to the fact that it does feature a one and a quarter inch adapter, I was able to attach a diagonal and an eyepiece to it. This allowed me to adjust the magnification as I saw fit by simply connecting a zoom eyepiece. And this solved my initial problem of finding the planet with the camera. The next challenge was to add a 2x bellow to increase the magnification and see if I could still find Saturn now that the field of view was two times smaller than before. And of course I couldn't. The alignment of the finder scope still wasn't accurate enough. Not only this, but the addition of the bellow pushed the focal plane so much further back that I needed to add two 45 mm extension rings to the camera just to be able to focus properly. On a side note here regarding the bellow, I did try out the 2x bellow from Teleview first just to maximize the image quality, but its two lens elements uh, pushed the focal point so much further back that I wasn't able to focus even after adding another 45 mm extension segment to the mix. So it had to be the 4 element 2x bellow from Siboni which by the way proved to be very good at its job. I will make a dedicated video review where I'll go into more details, but for now I can say that the SV216 2x Bello was definitely a good choice for this setup. Alright, now back to the testing. After being frustrated for still not having a properly aligned finder scope, the next day before it got dark outside, I picked out a landmark very far away and set out to align the finder scope to perfection. While at it, I also switched it out again, this time with a 9 by 50 mm right angle correct image finder scope from Skywatcher. The main reason for this being that it features a fine crosshair which makes fine tuning way easier. So after a few tests and multiple iterations later, I ended up with this oddly looking setup. The part after the focuser being almost as long as the optical tube of the telescope. But I guess the important thing is that it works. The optical system is now finally perfectly aligned and can achieve focus without a problem. Alright, now in order to plan and prepare for the capturing sessions, I used one of my favorite apps for astronomy called Night Shift in order to determine the exact day when the scene conditions would be the most favorable. The weather patterns started to change recently here in southern Germany as we transition to late autumn, which from an astronomy point of view doesn't sound that good with lots of clouds and air moisture being present as soon as the sun goes down. But on the night of my third attempt, I got really lucky. The cloud cover broke, revealing a fantastic looking sky full of stars. So I quickly began setting everything up and also doing some tests before starting with capturing the planet. And then it was finally time and Saturn rose above my neighbor's house and I could start recording. So just finished setting everything up and now waiting for Saturn to come up um, up behind that house over there
As mentioned in the beginning, for this project, I'm using the lucky imaging technique. This means that I pointed the telescope at Saturn, started the recording, and then waited until the object crossed the entire field of view of the camera. The aim here was to record as many frames as possible of the object in a small amount of time. For this, I reduced the resolution of the camera in order to boost the amount of frames it is able to record in a finite amount of time. So by reducing the resolution from 8.6 to 0.8 megapixels and by keeping the exposure times as low as possible without losing too much brightness, I was able to increase the FPS from 30 to 200. From where I was sitting with my telescope, Saturn takes about 27 seconds to cross the field of view of the camera. This means that from one pass of the planet, I'm getting around 5000 frames to work with. So let's head out to the post-processing part of this video and see what I actually managed to capture. In Fire Capture, I set out the raw output file type to be SER. And this file I then imported into PIPP for image stabilization and object centering. This is an important step as my video basically contains Saturn moving across the field of view. And for further processing I needed the planet to be still in the middle of the screen. Anyway, after processing the initial raw file I got another SER file, this time with the planet centered. And this file I then imported into AutoStackart where each frame got analyzed and its quality rated based on multiple factors. The best ones were then stacked on top of each other, creating a final TIFF file containing all the information of each individual frame in a single image. As a third and final step, I imported the image in GIMP for sharpening and color balancing. All right, so after all the processing, here is the final image of Saturn captured on the night of October the 11th. And because I couldn't just leave it at that, and because the seeing conditions were so good, I've also photographed Jupiter. Alright, so these are my first real attempts at capturing the planets of our solar system. And I know that these pictures aren't perfect. There is still a lot I need to learn and there are several areas where I can improve the capturing and editing processes. For instance, I will be adding a 3 or 4x bellow to the setup in the near future just to be able to bring the planets closer and therefore recording them with more details upgrading to a computerized mount that can actually track the object in the night sky is also something I'm going to do in the future. This will allow me to photograph for longer periods of time, which should also help with the details. And then there are several settings and configurations software side I can experiment with trying to improve the quality of the image in post. So yeah, there is definitely room for improvement, but I must say that even if the learning curve is steep in the beginning, the reward of getting your first decent shot of a planet is pretty sweet. Anyway, that's been it for now. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.